Right fellas, welcome back to a brand new video with my f -Rage two wheel drive Sapphire Cosworth. Quick backstory on the car, I picked it up from Scotland and I literally wiped out my bank account to buy this car. When I picked it up, even the brakes weren't working, so that's one of the first jobs I've done, fixed the brakes. It turned out to be a rusty old motor. Since then, we've just been trying to get it to look a bit more of a presentable Cosworth. And on my last couple of videos, we've been sorting out the fueling system, and I managed to get it running on my last video. And I also managed to pick up something we really need, a rear bumper. This is the original rear bumper off the car, and you can see it's got some chunks missing at the corner there, and this corner, you see there, there's some bits missing. Now, this is like a smooth textured bumper, so it's like, What's on a car? It's like on a door, do you know what I mean? It's nice, smooth paint. Now, the bumper I managed to pick up is absolutely mint. It's like, it hasn't been messed with. It's never, it's never had any damage on it. All the corners are mint where mine were chipped, but it is off a standard Sierra Sapphire. The Sapphire Cosworth rear bumper and a standard Sierra rear bumper are exactly the same, apart from the finish. They're the same shape and everything. It is literally just the finish that makes a difference between a Cosworth and a standard Sierra rear bumper. If you look at the texture, it's kind of like what you would black to black. It's like a, like quite a scratchy kind of texture compared to the standard bumper, which is obviously smooth. Like I said, the first job is to remove this bit of trim that's stuck in the groove of the bumper. Hopefully it'll just pull out with this bit of, this screwdriver. Doesn't matter, we're not keeping it. Oh, it's sharp. Oh, it's well stuck on that. Now this is the wrong trim for the bumper. It should actually be like a gloss black as opposed to this matte black. I don't know whether this was different and it's faded over time, but it is the wrong trim. So we will be replacing it. Right there, we'll go there, that off. It did break a few times, but we managed to get it off. Now we're going to have to clean this groove up. It's got a bit of, bit of green mould in, it's got Obviously the stuff it's stuck on with this white kind of double sided foam tape. So we'll remove that, then, I don't know, we'll figure it out as we go. This is new territory for me. I have never done anything like this. I've never even attempted to like paint a bumper or anything. Hopefully it'll turn out all right. So to remove the double sided tape, I'm going to avoid using like WD-40 and scraping it off because WD-40 is like a silicon, silicon based product and it just plays havoc with paint. So we're going to use this, this is called a toffee whale and hopefully it'll remove all this double sided tape. Easy. Now I found the toffee whale too fat to get in the groove where the trim sits. So what I done was I ground up a flat edge screwdriver to put a sharp point on so I kind of gouge the foam sticky stuff off what held the original trim on. And you'll never believe it, it absolutely turned out to work perfect. So that's the majority of the foam removed from here. I'm just going to give it a quick rub down the groove with some of this Avernet type cloth, just to kind of get rid of some of the high spots before we give it a clean. Right, so that is the groove where the trim sits pretty much, it's all removed, the double sided tape stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give it a good clean and get it ready for some, some paint. I've just noticed there's a little dint in it here. Might have to have a get, I might have to get some filler and give that a go at uh, getting rid of it. So the reason I'm going to clean the bump out with some fairy liquid is to remove any dirt, grease or grime, anything that will cause any contaminants when we paint the bumper. I am giving it a good scrub because I do not want to do this job twice. I want to get it right the first time. Now obviously once it's all soapy, we're just going to wash the soap off with some clean water. Then we'll pull it in the garage and leave it to dry. Right, so this bit here is the main area of damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dry it off with a bit of blue wool to get a thick of the water off. Then we'll get the heat gun on, just to remove any leftover dampness that's there. Now I am no expert at bodywork, but here we've got some, 
some like filler type stuff and we've got a we've got a card to put it in with this is called an onion board this is what we're going to mix it on it's called an onion board because it's got multiple layers do you know what I mean kind of like a book and you just tear a layer off as you go so this is a body filler we're using I've never done it before so fellas cross your fingers for us and hope it works so this is the hardener I'm putting in it's a two-part body filler and you mix it about one part to every 50 Right, it's mixed, let's give it a go. Listen, I know fellas, it looks a mess, but I'm sure once it's sanded down, it'll look all right. And if you're a bodywork fella, you're probably looking at me, do this thinking, Jesus Christ, Adam, what are we? But we're gonna have a go, I'm gonna have a go, I'm not bothered. Now, I know this doesn't look very neat, but I'm sure after a bit of elbow grease, with some sandpaper, this'll turn out spot on. It takes 25 minutes to dry, so we're gonna pop out and we're gonna get a Savaloy dip for dinner. And I'll see you in about 25 minutes from now. Hiya, can I have a Savaloy dip please with everything on? Right fellas, do you fancy some free beer? Well that's what the fellas at Beer 52 are offering you guys. This is my third box of beer. I honestly, I always get excited to open it. In each box, Beer 52 send the members unique beers from all around the world. You also get the Beer 52 Ferment magazine so you can learn about breweries and the wonderful world of beer while enjoying a tasty selection of fresh craft eels. If you don't like a dark beer, you can select a light beer only pack. Also, right, these crisps are honestly unreal. These ones are salt and vinegar, and these ones are Bombay sweet chilli. This one is a new beer. I've never tried this one. This one's called That's My Bag Baby, and it's 6%, so it is quite a strong, strong beer. Let's give it a go. Oh, it smells fruity. Oh, hey. It's nice, that one. So if at any point you're unhappy with B52, you can simply pause or cancel your subscription. To get your free case of beer, head over to beer52.com forward slash Adam to get your free case. That's beer52.com forward slash Adam to get your free case of beer. I'm going to finish this can, then we'll crack on with the car. I'm going to have a bag of crisps as well. Beer in a bag of crisps, you can't beat it. Let us see it, fellas. Check out beer52.com forward slash Adam. Hmm. Right, so the bumper will be dry now, and I've got one of these sanding blocks to rub the, like, the filler down to get it all nice and flat. You can do this yourself, try and avoid using your fingers, because your fingers will kind of make grooves and, grooves and impressions in the filler. You really want something perfectly flat like this. This is a proper 3M sanding block. I'll leave links to everything I'm using in the description of the video. Now let's start by doing this bit. There was a little scratch in where something must have caught along the bumper at some point. So we'll just sand it back and try and get it perfectly, perfectly smooth and nice for when, for when we eventually paint it. So you can see there where the scratch was, you absolutely cannot fail. Kind of fail that a little bit there, I'm just going to quickly rub down. So with that small scratch sanded down, let's move to the main part of the damage on the back of the bumper. Right, so I've sanded it back and it's still a small dint. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly mix a bit more of the filler and we'll put a little little drop in there, wait for it to dry and sand it back down again. But it has came out quite well. This is the body filler we've just used. And as you can see, it's gone rock hard. So let's peel a layer off the onion board and knock up a fresh batch of body filler. Like I said, there is a mixture, but it's not precise art. Basically, you want a big blob of this stuff and a small blob of the hardener. So there's the second coat going on. We'll give that about half an hour to dry. Then we'll give it a sand up and get it looking mint. Right fellas, while we wait for that body filler stuff to dry, what we're gonna do is, in the back of the car, we've got the back box off the car. The back, the back obviously the back box is not in the minute, it's here. So we're gonna fit this while we wait for that stuff to dry. In here, we've got 
a brand new clip to clamp it on. I've gone for this kind of style. I prefer this style personally. So the first thing is we're going to put this on the car. So I don't want to get the exhaust on and realise I've missed the clamp off. Hopefully this will go on without too much of an issue. And next we'll get this exhaust rubber on. There's the exhaust rubber on. There, we've got it nice and tight. There we go fellas, there's the back box fitted back on the car. Now let's get back on with sanding that bumper down. Just a quick reminder fellas, this is not my full time job, so do not give us too much of a hard time in the comments. I'm literally just giving it a go in my garage and trying to make a decent job of it. So once I'd finished sanding down the bumper, I took it back outside and washed it off with water to get rid of every speck of dust on the bumper. Right, so there's the bumper all washed down. Let's give it a good drying off. I'm gonna start with some blue wool. Right, so while we wait for the rest of that bumper to air dry, I'm gonna wrap some of the bits of the garage with some poly mask before we start painting. So the job of the poly mask is to stop the over spray going all over the cars, the telly and stuff like that. The only thing I don't like about poly mask is when you're finished with it and you put it in your wheelie bin, it takes up half the bloody wheelie bin. So while Amy's out, we're gonna make use of the garden furniture and use one of the chairs to paint the bumper on. Right, next job we're going to give it a good wipe down with some panel wipe slash degreaser just so to minimise any risk of getting any reaction in any of the paint work. Fellas, I've got everything poly masked up. I'm going to give it the first coat with some high build primer. This is a full tin from Halfords. Hopefully there's enough in here to do the bumper. I'm also going to wear a mask because I don't want this getting in my lungs. So, let's just Give it a go, it's all cleaned down, should be ready to go. I'm going to leave that dry, I'll catch up here, probably tomorrow, when I've let that dry off. I'm going to get it over here, because it absolutely stinks. Right fellas, I've given the bumper two coats. What I'm mainly trying to do is get rid of the original finish. I want it nice and smooth, so that's why I used high build primer. Now the next stage, what we need to do is, we need to get some fine wet and dry, and just get it nice and smooth. It's still a bit bumpy, it is a lot smoother than what it was but I want it perfectly smooth. When I'm sanding, I need to take extra care in this, this groove bit here, because I really want that perfect. I really want the bumper to look mint when it's done. So let's get a bucket, some 800 grit wet and dry, and give the bumper a rub down. Now I did try it on this block to start with, but it didn't really work, so I ended up spinning the block and just rubbing it down by hand. With the 800 grit wet or dry, it does rub down easy. When you rub the high build primer down with the sandpaper, it makes a paste. So I keep washing that off with water to reveal any little imperfections in the primer that the paste would cover. 
I've never painted anything this big before, so this is absolutely a full learning curve for me. I'm also taking extra care to get in the little grooves of the bumper. This is the Tornai cover and it's actually spring loaded so you can bend it back and get right in all the, all the creases. So when I rub my finger on the primer, I can feel any imperfections through my skin. That's why I keep going over the same spot, just to get it nice and smooth. You can see here just how rough the high build primer is before we rub it down with the 800 grit water dry. And it rubs down super easy. One of the key things is just keep washing it off with clean water just to remove that paste that builds up. When using this wet and dry, I feel like it's best to keep it as wet, almost as wet as possible. If it starts to go dry, it kind of sticks and it doesn't seem to work as well. Like, um, uh, listen, I am not a professional at this. So if you're a painter and you're watching us do this, try not to judge us too hard. I'm literally, I'm just having a go. If it, like I said, I always see it. If it turns out crap, I'll give it to a professional to finish it off for us. But I think I can get a good finish on this. It's just about being patient and making sure it's nice and smooth before we eventually paint it. It also helps keep washing it off, keep putting water on it. Oh, I just nearly wet my pants. Then you can kind of feel along and you can feel any rough, any rough spots with your fingers. Feels meant to be honest. If the finished paintwork was as smooth as this, I would be over the moon. Once I've rubbed it all down with the 800 grit wet or dry, I've then moved to 1500 wet or dry. This is a lot smoother than the 800 and it gets rid of a lot of the deeper scratches. So once I'd finished with the 1500 grit wet or dry, I then finished it with 3000. This basically feels like paper, there's hardly any abrasive and it just gives it like a super smooth finish. So once we'd finished sanding the primer, we then hit it with some degreaser, like I say, just to remove any dirt, grime, anything that'll cause any reactions in the paintwork. So the bumper is now all clean. I've been to my local paint suppliers, Madge Paints. Now these fellas always go above and beyond to get a good colour match. And how they get the colour match is, I took the original bumper off the staff over to, over to Madge Paints. And they literally, they spend ages getting a perfect colour match. So I've got like a load of tins here of colour matched aerosol. Now I was going to get, try a proper paint gun. It does work out cheap with a proper paint gun. But the problem is, I'm in a garage and it's not like a spotless environment and if I start blowing a paint gun about, it's just going to blow dust all over. So we're going to give it a first, the first coat, like a light dusting, with some of these, these cut, sample matched aerosols. They should be, or they will be, spot on. So let's crack one open, give it a shake and get it on the bumper. Like I say, first coat is just a light dusting. Right now, the first light dusting on. We'll give it 15, 20 minutes to dry off. Then we'll give it a second coat, a bit heavier. Right now, let's go for the second coat, second coat, a bit heavier. 
properly, I will not get too many wounds. This is by far the biggest thing I've ever attempted a paint with an aerosol. So let's see how it turns out. Cross your fingers for us fellas. One of my biggest takeaways from painting this bumper is when you apply in the paint, sometimes it'll look like satin, like it'll not look perfectly smooth, but then after five minutes, the paint kind of flows out and it turns to a smooth texture. I think that's one of the keys to not getting runs. Learn how the paint works, learn a look like a satin finish, then if you leave it just a couple of minutes, it'll smoothen out and go to a nice smooth finish. So as you can see, I'm absolutely hammering through these rattle cans there's honestly not that much paint in them, but let's just crack on and get it painted. One thing I've always struggled with when painting is knowing when to stop painting, stop messing about, just put everything down and water away. And at this point, I'm going to walk away. It's good enough to where I think I'll be able to flatten any marks that come out. And at the minute, there's no runs in the paintwork. As it dries, fingers crossed we'll not get any. But like I say, at the minute, I'm going to put the paint in down and walk away. I've left the bumper to dry overnight. And unfortunately, a few runs has developed as it's dried. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, right? I'm going to try and get the runs out without taking the paint off. And like I say, if it goes tits up, I'll just take it out of a professional and get this done. But I'm going to have a go myself. Let's crack on. So to get the runs out, I've seen people do it with it like a standing knife blade. So we're going to give it a go with these. Hopefully it'll work. Now unfortunately I think the paintwork is still a bit soft where the run is because obviously the run's thicker paintwork. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some really fine wet and dry and give the full bumper a gentle rub down. But overall I'm fairly pleased with how it came out. I mean it's not a professional job but it's certainly good enough for, I don't know, for what I'm going to do with the car. So unlike the primer where we start to rub it down with the 800 grit wet and dry, for the paint work, I've gone with the 1500. I would rather put a bit more elbow grease into it and make a better job. So that's what we're starting with. We're starting with the 1500 grit, wet or dry, plenty of water, keep it clean and keep rubbing. Once it's finished with the 1500 grit, I then put me orbital sander on and hit it with 3000. This, like I say, is as smooth as paper. You can probably hold it on the same spot for an hour and not even rub through. So let's come back to this run. I'm gonna get a standing knife blade and slowly scrape it across. One slip up here and all this hard work is gonna be undone. Right, that's as far as I dare go with a standing knife. So now I'm just going to rub it down with some like 800 wet and dry, then I'll go to the 1500, then I'll finish it off with some 3000. I don't think it'll totally go, but to be honest, it's just going to be a quirk of the car. So where the run was, I then broke out the 1500 grit wet and dry, and then finished it off with some 3000 grit. And honestly, I couldn't believe it. It was pretty much gone. I'm over the moon with how I got rid of that run. So this is the finish on the bumper prior to polishing it with some G3. So that's the next step. We're going to get me drill, get some G3 and buff it up. I must say I'm quite impressed with how, how it's turned out. It is by no means a professional job, but it's certainly good enough for me. So to use the G3, I'm going to use a pad, a damp pad, 
with a couple of drops of G3 on, then we're going to gently polish over the bumper, keeping the pad flat to the paintwork. So it's a bit awkward to polish when it's on this garden furniture, it's kind of, it's rotting about and I've spent a lot of time on it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the car, we'll take the poly mask off the car and we'll put it on and uh, do you know what it is? Just check it even fits because I've never even tried the bumper on the car and I mean I've got every faith in Madge paints but let's also check the colour match. So we'll take the poly mask off and we'll get the bump, try and get the bumper on the car without scratching it. I feel like the garage has been covered in poly masks for months so it's really nice to eventually take it off the cars. So you can see here there's a big gap between the bumper and the bodywork of the car. I'm not happy with the gap, we will address this further in the video. Right, so the bumper is fitted, it is not finished. I need to order some brackets to go on the side to hold the sides of the bumper on and I need to order some trim that goes in the bumper, like black trim. Now what we're going to do next is I'm going to drop the car off the axle stands because it hasn't been off the axle stands in a while and it looks better on the floor and I've got some new backlights. The backlights that are in are not proper four-door Sierra backlights. These are. So a huge thanks to Rick for sending these out. So let's drop the car off the axle stands and fit these backlights. The backlights that are actually in the car are reproductions. They're not genuine Ford items, unlike the ones we've got to go in the car now. The backlights are just held in place with a couple of, couple of nuts. So it's just a case of unbolting them and they'll just drop out. So this is the head, the backlight I've just took out. This is the one that's going in. And if I hold them up, you can see the difference. So this is the one that's going in. This is the one that's came out. Can you see the how fat this one is compared to that one. If you look that way on, can you see how much fatter the, the one that's going in is? Quite a difference. So let's put this on the car. So this is a super simple job. The backlight is just held in with a couple of nuts. Now unfortunately, the, like the, the amber isn't as nice on the, one that's, on the lights that have gone in, but there are the lights that are meant to be in. So that's what we're going to leave in. And yet again, a huge thanks to Ricky for sending us them out. So let's do the other side, then we'll crack on with another job. Right, there's the backlights in. And if anyone is watching this and they've got a pushy in boot lock for Sierra, get in touch. I do need one. That's why my boot's not shutting. So if anyone has a boot lock, Please get in touch on my Instagram, just here. Now, let's move on to the next job. So the next job on the staff is to finally get rid of these absolutely disgusting GB plates. I am not a fan of GB plates. And thanks to DB Graphics for sending out some genuine dealer style plates. These are the old style font, so it's like slightly wider letters and numbers as they were posed. These are like the modern font, like these GB plates, like the modern font, so it's quite skinny. But these are some absolutely beautiful plates from, like I say, DMB Graphics. I'll leave a link to them below. This is the back one. So they've got a sticker on. And we'll leave that on while we drill some holes. But this car originally, when it was new, was bought from that garage there, Trimco in, Lu in Luton. Aren't they beautiful plates? So let's take this Mankey GB one off and get this nice dealer plate on. First job is to get a Phillips screwdriver out of the toolbox and get the plates off the car. So in the bag we've got some new screws. We've got white for the front reg plate, we've got yellow for the back reg plate, and we've got black for if the screw lands on a, on a letter of the reg plate. But as these reg plates were like straight and the sat nice, I'm just going to copy these holes on the new reg plate. Simple job, super simple. I'm going to drill from the back on the new reg plates to avoid pushing this sticker off the plastic. So we'll put them face down. We'll tape them together to keep them in place.
Then we've got a drill and we drill draw. With a nice sharp drill bit in the drill, I'm going to go nice and slow. I'm not going to put too much pressure on as I drill through. What do you think fellas, the black caps or the yellow? I think I prefer the black. Now if you're watching this thinking, I wouldn't mind some of them red plates for myself. If you look through your car's service history, uh, you should find, if it's got a good service history, you should find where the car was bought originally from you. If you can't, if you still can't at DMB Graphics, that might be able to find out for you. So let's get these beauties on the car. There's a back ridge plate on, and personally, I think that looks 10 times better. If you're interested in getting some plates, like I say, I will leave a link to DMB Graphics in the description. I can't put the front ridge plate on just yet because the front end of the car is pressed right against the wall. So I'll keep this and I'll do this when we do the front end of the car next time. So you might notice the back of the bumper is sitting a bit low and you might think, oh, Adam just hasn't bolted it up properly. Well, it is fully bolted up. So what we're gonna do is, there's some, I've done some research and apparently SAF back bumpers are a bit notorious for getting funny fitment, but there is some adjustment on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the back bumper off, see if we can get the adjusters, cause they do look quite rusty. So we'll see if we can get the adjusters working and see if we can get that corner lifted up tight that is fully tightened up there, the bumper, and it is not sitting as I would want. So let's get a spanner and a socket set and get that back bumper off. And fingers crossed we don't scratch it. So this is the bracket that holds the back bumper onto the car. And what you do is you adjust this screw on the bottom and it moves the bracket up and down to close the gap. I did try some WD-40 on mine as they weren't moving, but it just didn't work. So there's only one thing to do. We'll have to take the brackets off the bumper and try and fix them. So this is the screw that's seized. I let it soak for about 24 hours in WD-40 and it wouldn't move. And in the end, I just thought I'm gonna to have to give it a good yank to try and get it to move. But unfortunately, it still didn't move and it snapped off. So now we're in a bit of a pickle. These are the only brackets I've got and we need to make them work. So I ended up making a new bolt to go into the bracket. And while I had them off the car, I thought I might as well blast them and paint them up. Just so they look nice and they'll last a good few more years. Once we painted up, I cleaned the threads out with a tap. I then put the bolt in just to check it would all work. I'd spent a lot of time doing this and it really needs to work. I've got no other option than to get these working. I even had to make a new little nut thing to go on the end of the bolt. So there's only one thing left to do. Break out the hot glue gun and put it all together and hope it works. As you can see fellas, now it's all built, welded up and painted, the adjustment moves absolutely mint. Over the moon with how it's turned out. So I always clean the threads out when I'm rebuilding something. It just makes the process a lot easier of putting a batter together. Now let's get the batter on and see if it works. Right, so now them adjuster brackets are all painted up and fitted to the bumper. Let's get the bumper on the car and do our best not to scratch it. So that gap is still a bit big, so let's head under the car and see if those adjusters are going to work and we'll close that gap up a bit. Fingers crossed, it should work. I've got every faith, but still cross your fingers.
So to be fiddly under the car with this big long Allen key, I can only get a little turn at a time, but it is working. As you can see, the gap is closing up. So that's maximum adjustment on the back bumper. That's as high as I can get it. So let's move on to the next job. In case you didn't know, there should be a bit of black trim in there. So that's what we're going to fit next. We did take the original one out, just snapped and felt a bit. So I went on eBay and ordered a sapphire rear bumper, bit of trim. So this is literally just double sided tape on the back and it should fit nicely in the gap on the back bumper. So let's fit this. So the way I like to fit these trims is I'll literally pull a couple of inches of the sticky backing off, then I'll put the trim in place and pull the backing as I push the trim into place. I don't pull all the tape off at once or you just end up with like a big sticky spaghetti mess. When you buy the trims from maybe they are actually a bit long, so you do have to trim it at length. I just used a bare tin snips just to snip the end off. So how mint does the back of the car look now? I've got the trim on, I've got the bumper polished up, I've got my new reg plate on. The only thing left to do is to fit the rear reg plate lights. Right fellas, that is the back bumper fitted painted the bumper, we've put the strip on, we've put the, the reg plate lights on, we've also fitted a brand new reg plate from DMB Graphics. Now don't forget how far this car has came since I picked it up from Scotland. If you enjoyed the videos, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and until next, oh, and if anyone has a boot lock, please drop us a message on Instagram. But yet again, thanks for watching and I'll catch us on the next one. Cheers. <clears throat> the Sapphire Cosworth rear bumper and the standard Sierra rear bumper are exactly the same apart from the finish. They're the same shape and everything. It is literally just the finish that makes a difference between a Cosworth and a standard Sierra rear bumper.